Alright guys, this is part two of my CIS rebuild. In the previous episodes, I showed you how to tear this thing down, and then in the last episode, I showed you how to inspect your airbox and reinforce it, prevent it from blowing out in the future, along with the pop-off valve. I'm also going to show you how to install new fuel injector inserts and new intake boots, um, as well as just put everything together. This is a rat's nest of hoses and wiring and tubing and all sorts of stuff, so let's get into it. So the next thing we're going to do, rebuild the fuel rails with the fuel injector inserts and the, o the new O-rings. There's two O-rings on each runner. One of them goes in this groove here, and then this fatter one sits in there. We're going to install these thinner ones first. Um, just like before, I'm going to lubricate my O-rings with some dielectric grease. Alright, those are pretty sticky. So I think that's seated pretty well. You can see where the original was staked in there and I just had to grind out that top area so that's fully seated. Just using a 10 millimeter socket and an extension. So sometimes when you pound these in, the staked areas that you had to grind with the Dremel, um, they'll just shear off a little bit of plastic. Not really a big deal. Uh, you just want to get it out of there to make sure it doesn't go into this cup where this bigger O-ring is going to sit. So if there's any shreds of plastic, just uh, dig that out of there. All right, so what I've done now is I've taken all six runners, thrown them on here, I think they're in the correct order, and then I've put one nut on each runner just to hold them there temporarily. Now what I'm gonna do is try to bring the whole fuel system over here and jam it on to all these inlets. And then what I'll do is I'll undo these nuts and lift it off and then tighten all the hose clamps. I think that'll work. So 
So I've done some more research. This is an EGR tube. I don't have an EGR system. I think someone screwed in this fitting into this fitting with a piece of aluminum in between them to block this off. Um, otherwise, there'd just be an opening into my airbox. There is a seal here. It's like an O-ring inside here that allows this pipe to move around. I don't trust that seal, and I read that you can unthread this hex right here and just put in a drain plug for like an oil pan or something like that. So I'm actually gonna try to break the seal of silicone that I goobered on here. And I'm gonna try to remove this pipe because I'm pretty sure that it'll seal better and I'll lose some more weight. Wow, came right out, awesome. If you're trying to find a plug for this, just look for something that's M22 at one and a half thread pitch. Um, this is for a 94 Dodge Ram. Um, the, the threads are a little too deep, that's fine. I'm just gonna put some Teflon on here and jam it in there and we shouldn't have any leaks. I think before I put the intake on, I think I need to put all the spark plug wires in. I have new spark plugs, I'm gonna throw those in and throw in the new spark plug wires. When I was disassembling the engine, I didn't really know what everything was. This bracket is for an EGR part that I no longer have. So this part holds up the airbox, this part bolts onto the runner. All this stuff isn't necessary. So what I'm gonna do is just chop this off. I know it's nice and powder coated, but I'll just cover that raw edge up with a little bit of paint, should be good. One of the things that I've been struggling with is a lot of the hoses on this CIS system are these braided hoses and they are getting brittle. I'm really surprised it didn't crack. I tried to cheap out. I tried to go to my local auto parts store and find some that I thought would be a relatively good fit. Uh, it didn't work. I'll show you why. So due to the difference in construction with the braiding being on the outside of these hoses, they hold a radius different than a lot of other hoses. So this is a hose that I got from the auto parts store that looked like the ID was pretty similar, but you, as you can see, it's just all kinked. If there is vacuum, they'll probably just seal themselves shut. So I'm gonna have to pull this back off. I did buy all these hoses from uh, Bell Metric. They've got pretty good prices and they have kind of everything you can think of for hoses. So no matter what kind of car you're working on, I'm definitely gonna be using these guys in the future. All right, so you may remember that when I was taking this apart, there was a 
electrical motor here with a blower. This is a piece that goes on here to hold the blower. I got it powder coated, but I'm not going to be needing it because I did do the heat backdate. One of the things it did was it held this piece. I forget what this thing is called right now, but this is uh, something to do with a vacuum system and warm up. It's got a little electrical connector that opens a valve in here after a certain amount of time or something. That mounted right onto this piece, if I remember right, kind of like this. What I'm gonna have to do is try to find a different place to mount this because I'm not using this piece anymore. What I think I'm gonna do now is just remove this intake bolt and see if I can install this here. All right, so that about wraps up the uh, intake and fuel system for this episode. Other than the fuel injectors, I have everything hooked up. On a 77, you're only gonna have one vacuum line coming from your distributor. That's going to run to a T intersection, and that T is going to go to the lower port of the throttle body, and it's going to wrap around to the center of this little guy, which I have mounted on the intake. I, the other line here, is going to run, it's gonna go around this way and turn into a bigger hose and come into the top of the whir here. And then the other line from the throttle body is going to just go straight down and go into the back of the whir down in there. So what I've tried to do is tuck as much of the hoses underneath the intake runners to show those off. Next steps are going to be installing all the engine tin and getting it off this stand and bolted up to that transmission. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put the exhaust on first or not. If anyone has any experience with leaving the exhaust on or taking it off when you're installing it, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned.